Assalamualaikum and hello uh, everyone. Well, uh, fruit jam. You can see fruit jam on the slide there. Uh, well, I would like to talk about fruit jam today in this uh, lesson, uh, in this video. But the title on the slide is called Pectin. Why Pectin? Well, because in the jam or any fruit jam, um, you will find one ingredient called pectin. In fact, pectin can be found in uh, plant uh, in the form uh, in 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 the fruits in the you know in 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 many parts of the plant because pectin uh, in the in the original form protopectin is actually part of a cell wall. So this very interesting ingredient and um, it can find pectin actually in most of the fruit based uh, products including jam. Um, in this presentation, actually, I would like to share one uh, one of the many uh, issues or problems faced during the processing of fruit jam. And um, this is one of them. So let me read the problem and let's go through how uh, we can troubleshoot the problem and maybe suggest the possible uh, solution for it. Okay, now, um, assume, uh, imagine that you are a food technologist. You are working as the, with a the pectin supplier. So a customer call you. Um, and they ask, they say they are, they're having a problem. So they are facing the problem during the production. So as a supplier, you need to troubleshoot the, the problem for them and suggest the possible or the likely solutions. So the first one, the jam failed to set. The jam failed to set, meaning, you know, the, 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 the pectin in the fruit jam somehow failed to set, failed, failed to form a gel because the function of jam in in the fruits in the fruit jam is actually to help uh, to form a gel and give the texture to the jam. The second problem is the blackberry jam. So there's a specific type blackberry fruits jam uh, set too fast. So this is actually the opposite of problem number one. Number one, the jam failed to set, and the second one, the blackberry jam set too fast before you can even you know uh, dispense it or pump it into the bottle. And the third one, the citrus fruit in marmalade near the top. And if you know marmalade, usually they have uh, fruit pits or fruit pieces or, or the um, peel, the, sit, the, the, the fruit peel actually uh, suspended in the jam. But in this case, uh, it's actually fruit near the top. So this is something not, not uh, desirable. And the fourth one, a lot of air bubbles trapped in the jam. So these four problems actually are related to the pectin and maybe to the processing also to some extent. But here we focus on the pectin itself. So let's, um, first before we, we offer the solution to this problem, uh, we need to understand more about pectin. So where do we get pectin? Pectin is basically the, the, the ingredient that we extract from the plant because it is actually uh, exist in, in the plant, uh, in the peel, in the skin, in the, in the, in the fruits, uh, various parts of the plant. So we need to extract it. Um, the commercial pectin in the food industry are basically uh, the, extracted from the peel of citrus fruits. Example of citrus fruits like lime, lime, orange, or it can be also extracted from apple pomace. So it is a byproduct from the industry. Uh, you know the the, the so-called the, the the fruit waste you know, in the form of uh, peel or in the form of uh, you know the, the the part that usually taken after the fruit has been extracted for the juice. Uh, so we can extract pectin from it. Uh, it will it will go through some uh, processes before we can get the the pectin and then can be used. Uh, in food production or in food uh, as food ingredients. So let's uh, look at the chemical structure because um, as a food technologist, you need to understand the chemical structure of the pectin. Basically, there are three types of pectin. Pectin consists of uh, actually a polymer or polygalacturonic acid. And um, there's the, the carboxyl group present in the polymer, the COOH group. Um, and that uh, give the, the certain properties to the pectin. 
But some of the carboxyl group actually present in the esterified form. So as you can see it there, COOH, CH3. That's the methyl ester or methyl ester group. Um, so um, we have the first type, high methoxyl pectin, or we call it HMP uh, in short. And um, they contain certain amount of uh, ester group. So usually uh, the degree of esterification we express as degree of esterification of DE above 50%. Then we call it high methoxyl pectin. When the DE is below 50%, uh, we have uh, what we call low methoxyl pectin or LMP. Um, but the, the low methoxyl pectin, there's also another group called, or, or another type called LME pectin or low methoxyl pectin, where you have the COO, CH, NH2, NH2, the amine group or the amide uh, group. Uh, then um, we have low methoxyl amidated pectin. So basically there are three types and they have different properties, different gelling properties, different requirement to form a gel. So let's see how uh, or under what condition they can form a gel. And then from there we will understand and be able to troubleshoot the problem when the, the pectin or the gem containing the pectin doesn't set or set too fast and so on. Um, this diagram shows um, the different types of uh, pectin. We can actually uh, use a process of deesterification to form a, a lower or a low methoxyl pectin from the high methoxyl pectin. So starting from the high methoxyl pectin, we can do some chemical uh, processes uh, to produce what we call low methoxyl pectin, which has a degree of esterification below 50%. And of course, another type uh, when we have the amide, the amine group there, NH2, yeah, then we have a low methoxyl amidated pectin. And you see the, 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 the line uh, dividing the two types, the high methoxyl and the low methoxyl pectin. When degree of esterification uh, above 50, we call it high methoxyl, and below 50, we call it low methoxyl pectin. And for high methoxyl pectin or uh, LMP, we can further divide them um, into so-called rapid set and slow set pectin, or sometimes we have also ultra rapid set or ultra slow set or medium set. And this is actually uh, categorized based on the, how fast the pectin form a gel or the gelling time. So rapid set can can uh, rapid set pectin can form a gel within you know uh, minutes within one or two minutes. Whereas, whereas a slow set pectin can take a more, you know, more than one hour to set. And there are different applications for this uh, rapid set and a slow set. And you can see here for high methoxyl pectin, the type of products that uh, we can use there, acid milk products, jam, jellies, confectionery, and the low methoxyl pectin, including the low methoxyl emediated pectin because of uh, they, they have actually a different requirement for gelling. Uh, they actually need calcium uh, to to form a gel, whereas high methoxyl pectin doesn't need calcium to form a gel. So under what condition high methoxyl pectin will form a gel? Let's look at the next slide here. So you can see here, uh, for high methoxyl pectin, um, these are the requirements. They need soluble solid between 65 to 75%, and this soluble solid mainly in the form of uh, sucrose or sugar or glucose syrup uh, that we add uh, into the into the into the uh, fruit jam and we need to boil the mixture so that the soluble solid will reach a concentration around 65 to 75 percent but then uh, we need also another uh, factor there before the pectin can set we need to have the pH in the range of 2.9 to 3.2 so this is within the very narrow pH range, which we can adjust by using citric acid so that the pH fall within this range. So when you have the pH within this range and the soluble solid within that range, 65 to 75%, the pectin should be able to set uh, properly and nicely. Uh, 
And um, usually the concentration of high methoxyl pectin in fruit jam is not very high, actually. It's less, less than 1%, typically between 0.2 to 0.5%. Uh, Whereas for low methoxyl and low methoxyl uh, emidated pectin, uh, usually the pectin concentration is between 0.4 to 1%. And they don't need very high soluble solid. They just need calcium. So and between L, low methoxyl LM and low methoxyl emidated pectin, they have a different reactivity towards calcium, meaning that, uh, you know, how how fast they form gel in the presence of calcium, depending on the concentration of calcium. So this is some, uh, one of the factors that you need to uh, consider. And actually, we can play around with the concentration of calcium in order to, uh, you know, form a gel uh, using low methoxyl or low methoxyl emidated pectin. And um, when we use pectin um, in products like fruit jam, we need to really consider two factors here, very important factors. One is pH, and the pH also would depend on the type of fruits we use. Some fruit like you know, the, the black currant or blackberry, um, they, they, have, uh, they are very acidic fruit, so the pH is very low. So when you have very low, when you have a very low pH or high acid uh, fruits uh, in, to make a jam, so you need to consider the type of pectin, because if you use um, when when the pH is very low and you use high methoxyl pectin, high degree of esterification, then most likely the pectin, uh, most likely the jam will set very very fast, and you know when the set when the jam set very fast can cause a problem. For example, you know, uh, you don't you have enough time to pump or to, uh, you know, dispense the, the jam into the bottle because it's already set during the mixing or during in the, in, the, in the mixing tank, for example. So you need to consider the pH of the fruits or, or the jam. Then you need to choose whether you want to use, you know, a rapid set or slow set pectin. So the type of pectin uh, also depends on the degree of esterification. For high methoxyl pectin, they just they need a certain amount of soluble solid and also the pH range bef before it can set. Whereas for low methoxyl and low emidated pectin is more suitable for uh, you know low sugar product where because they just need calcium to form a gel. So back to our problem. The first one, the jam failed to set properly. When the jams fail to set properly, then we have to look at maybe um, the, the pectin itself and the pH. So in this case, when the jam uh, failed to set properly, it could mean that what the pH is not adjusted within that range just now, 2.9 to 3.2. So what we need to do is to bring down the pH within that range. Usually we can use citric acid in this case. And another problem, uh, possible problem issue here or the problem, the possible factor here why the jam failed to set properly, it could be that uh, uh, the amount of soluble solid. Because remember, for if we are using high methoxyl pectin, there are two criteria that we need to fulfill. One is the concentration of soluble solid, which should fall within that range and the other one is a pH. So these two um, criteria need to be fulfilled otherwise the jam will fail to set properly. So for example maybe the soluble solid is doesn't have not reached let's say 60% around that value. It has to be what 60% and above. So what we need to do is to continue to uh, hit the mixture or boil it to remove the water so that the soluble solid will reach the concentration. Or maybe we check the pH. If the pH uh, doesn't fall within that range, then you need to add acid in order to, uh, citric acid in order to bring the pH within that range. The second problem, the blackberry jam uh, set too fast. This is a case of usually uh, because blackberry jam 
blackberry fruits has a high amount of acid and very acidic fruits and the pH probably uh, within the the range you know like two point something um, so when the pH is very low if we are using high methoxyl pectin uh, then the gem of course will set very very fast and that can cause problem during processing uh, sometimes we want it because of certain reason but if we don't want the gem to set too fast then we had, we need to use the slow set uh, pectin to allow sufficient time for the gel to set and this is especially important for low pH or high acid fruits uh, when we make the gem from those type of uh, fruits. The third one, the citrus peel in marmalade floating near the top. So the marmalade gem contain, uh, you know, sometimes fruit pieces or citrus peel. And um, we usually want the citrus peel or the fruit pieces to be suspended just like you see in the picture here. They are suspended nicely, uniformly in the jam. We don't want it to float or we don't want it to, uh, you know, precipitate at the bottom. So for this one, we need to choose a, a suitable type of pectin. And in this case, uh, it should be, it should, the pectin or the fruit jam should set uh, quite fast, but not too fast, but quite fast so that it will kind of uh, form a gel and then uh, it will kind of uh, retain the fruit pieces or the fruit peel uh, in, in the gel you know uh, so it will set then hold uh, the fruit particles or the fruit pieces or the fruit peel in suspension uh, as you can see in the picture here so we need to choose and you know uh, we have to kind of sometimes try and error uh, but usually you want to have a quite a rapid uh, set or medium set pectin for this purpose uh, if you use a slow set pectin then it will set take longer time to to form a gel and that would allow the fruit peel to float um, because uh, the density is is uh, lower so it will float on on the top and that might not be what we need in this type of product. The last one, a lot of air bubbles trapped in the jam. Well, the air bubble is always uh, there during the processing when you heat up the mixture and uh, it will form, you know, the, the air will form the air bubbles. And when the jam set too fast, it won't allow enough time for the air bubbles to move and, you know, uh, move out from from the jam mixture so this happens because uh, we are using you know high uh, rapid set uh, pectin in this case so we need to adjust uh, you know the gelling time so that the air bubbles can uh, be removed and it can move out from the mixture uh, enough time for the air bubble to escape from the mixture so finally um, when we work with 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 uh, pectin, uh, for example, for the product like fruit jam, we have to consider the type of pectin, the degree of esterification, and the requirement for the for the type of pectin that we choose uh, to set or to form a gel. Uh, mainly the amount of soluble solid, the pH, and for the low methoxyl and low aminated pectin, uh, maybe uh, you know the calcium. The requirement for calcium how much calcium is needed uh, how sensitive they are to the presence of calcium because uh, low methoxyl and low aminated pectin have different so-called reactivity towards uh, calcium so you can actually adjust the amount of calcium in order to adjust the gelling time um, and uh, you can also use a low methoxyl pectin for a specific application for example uh, in low sugar product because they don't need high amount of sugar like high methoxyl pectin so um, this, uh, this so this um, this pr problem here illustrate some of the uh, facts that you need to know and the function about pectin, uh, the types of pectin and the requirement for gelling of the different types of uh, pectin. That's all for now. Thank you very much.